Hello everybody, my name is Graham Elwood and you are watching The Political Vigilante. So you know how we've talked about that we just need to put some money and research into things that can help reverse climate change? Because there's already technology and already research happening that just needs funding to make it put it on a mass scale? Well, guess what? This article was sent by Patreon supporter Jasmine Mad. Thank Jasmine, thank you so much for supporting the show. A vigorous devourer of greenhouse gas is living beneath our feet. It just seems to be really, really, really efficient. Okay, here's what happened. European researchers report that they're isolated and grown a species of soil bacteria that lives on methane. The potent greenhouse gas that is second in importance only to the almighty carbon dioxide. So we've talked about this. Methane, the, one of the big issues with methane is there's all this methane in the polar ice caps. The fact that they're melting at alarming rates. Each year there's a new study saying they're melting faster than we anticipated. So there's a real worry. This is a, legit, an, 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 a scientist in the Arctic put this out there saying if all this methane gas gets released at the same time, it will create basically a methane bomb that could really eliminate all of the breathable air on the planet. So CO2s are, the, are a very big concern, but methane is like, they're really worried about all this methane getting rapidly released into the environment. I did a video on methane gas coming out from the permafrost in Siberia because there's all this climate change causing higher, te higher temperatures that's releasing it. So now here's something that could potentially counteract that. Again, we put this on a mass scale, this could really change things. The bacteria is methacol, I don't know how to pronounce that, <laughs> Gorgana, whatever, Methyl Methacopsa, Gorgana, sounds like a Marvel villain, which lives in the soil all over the earth because it can live on methane present in extremely low concentrations. The feisty microbe can pull the gas out of the atmosphere and consume it even when it's not near a major source. This is exciting news. I'm not a scientist and this is, this is exciting news, right? I, I talk a lot about on the show when I do the live stream, many of you, I mean, look, Jasmine, one of you, that's why you're all political vigilantes, sent me this. This is the kind of information that gives me hope. The global atmospheric level of methane, CH4, the second most important greenhouse gas is currently increasing by 10 million tons per year. Again, mainly because the ice caps are melting at such an alarming rate. And don't tell me it's geoengineering and when I, okay, yeah. So here's what this PhD, this woman, uh, one of the, part of the, the team working on this uh, report. We were lucky to get this atmospheric methane oxidizer in pure culture in the laboratory. Met Marianne Spenning, a PhD, a professor of Arctic and marine biology at the Arctic University of Norway. The team is hopeful that they will eventually be able to harness M. Gorgona to eat more and more methane out of the sky, but for the time being, they're focusing on its role in the ground. I'm all for a grassroots approach. That's really how to fix a lot of things, but climate change, climate collapse, which we are currently in right now, look what's happening in Australia. And a new report just came out, oh, it wasn't started by humans, right? And even if it was, just for a second, and let's just talk about Australia just for a second, even if people did start the fires, which there's a report saying that's not true, but even if they did, just for argument's sake, the fact that they have spread so rapidly is a direct result of drought caused by climate change, okay? So I don't wanna just wake up. This is happening. Climate collapse is happening right now, okay? Which is why we need a top-down approach which is why we need a real Green New Deal, which is why the Sunrise Movement just endorsed Bernie Sanders because he has the most comprehensive Green New Deal of anybody running for president. He has the most 
comprehensive. Look, I'm very, very critical of Tom Steyer, and I think he's, he should stop wasting his money and run out of, and jump out and get out of the race and just put his money, it, just put it into climate change, not buying ad time. So, But the one thing he has brought up in the debates, in addition to you know maybe being kind of a Republican, is that he would say on day one as president, he would call this a national emergency and, and put things in place to make, when you declare something a national emergency, then all these resources and everything, when the president does that. So I'm glad he's at least bringing that up. He has no business being on the debate stage and him and Bloomberg just bought their way in there because they're billionaires while Tulsi and Mike Gravel can't be on the stage. That's offensive to me. But that state, that statement that he made is true. And that's why we need a real Green New Deal. And the only two candidates that I've seen ever really talk about it without giving it lip service are Bernie and Tulsi. Tulsi, the author of the Off Act, right? Liz Warren wants to green up the military. Oh, like I've said before, I'm sure the people in the Middle East will be so happy they're getting bombed by rockets powered by biodiesel. <laughs> so this would be part of a Green New Deal. It's not just building wind turbines and solar panels because doing all of that extracts a lot of the resources and the construction of those products can still be pretty harmful to the environment. So we have to find ways to not just get off of oil and find clean energy, which are obviously, but stuff like this, which then literally pulls methane out of the environment. The application is somehow difficult to see now, but new knowledge can lead to applications that we don't even see at the moment, she says. That's what I'm talking about. There's people coming up with stuff with this right now. We put some real money and research behind this. What could we do with this? How quickly could we get this up and running? And what other things would we find? Could we discover, oh man, you can do this. You can do this and this. You can pull this out of the ocean. Who knows what's available? They're just, Japan is dumping all of this radioactive water from Fukushima into the damn Pacific Ocean. That's pretty scary. If, we, if the oceans die off, guess what? Life on planet Earth is done. It literally has a matter of, if everything in the ocean dies, planet Earth dies within a, mat, like year, a year or two, the whole planet's dead. So that's why this is significant. If we can figure this out to pull methane out of the environment. What else could we do? I did a video on this, remember this? Algae pulling carbon dioxide out of the environment? Many researchers think algae may be part of the answer to slowing greenhouse gas emissions. As global carbon dioxide levels continue to go up, more mandates are likely to come down on power plants which provide our energy. Local 12's Josh Knight shows us how going green could actually have a very literal meaning and it's already happening here. Power plants like this one in Boone County burn coal to create electricity, but that also releases greenhouse gas into the air. But now, that's being harnessed to grow algae and ultimately much more. We've made jet fuel, we've made uh, renewable diesel fuel. Hard to believe they can go from algae to jet fuel, but making new products out of coal's leftovers has been going on for years. The flue gas coming from a coal fire plant, it's 10% uh, is uh, CO2. Or carbon dioxide, one of the most problematic greenhouse gases. The part you can see is water vapor and the majority is nitrogen. All right, here we go. I just heard the valves go. The University of Kentucky and Duke Energy have partnered in this project. Algae is growing in the tubes, and like all plants, it grows and makes food using carbon dioxide, sunlight, and water. But inside these tubes, it has all the carbon dioxide it could want. Research like this is happening around the world, but this is the only place in the country where they're actually tied into a power plant. The gas coming out of that stack is actually the same gas running through this pipeline, and this is what they're using to run their tests. At this point, the amount of gas being diverted is minuscule, equivalent to a leak in the ductwork, but they're proving it's possible. They, they call it research for, for a reason. The, the, there's the re in research, so you do it over and over again until you find a way that works. In order to scale this up to take on all the gas from the flu, it would be a much bigger operation. Um, we're talking uh, hundreds of acres, uh, potentially square miles, um, and that's just a, uh, a factor of how fast the organism grows. 
and how much CO2 is being generated. Wilson says that could be a good thing. But if you look at that from a positive side, um, you could say that's an awful lot of biomass we're producing, an awful lot of, uh, of, of final product. And that could be used to make anything from biofuel to pharmaceuticals, allowing you to grow green, go green, and maybe even make some green. In Boone County, Josh Knight, Local 12 News. The University of Kentucky researchers and students continue to improve on the efficiency of their design. They say in the right setting, growing algae can... All right, so that's the local news channel, but here's my point. We mass produce this algae thing. We mass produce this, this, you know, bacteria in the soil. You know what that also creates? Jobs. Jobs for farmers. Jobs for the transportation. I don't know, how, you know, like... There's all this, you put money behind it, there's jobs to be made. Part of Bernie's Green New Deal is transitioning people that are working in, in fossil fuels. So let's say you're working in an oil refinery or you just work for a coal mine or you, you have a job with one of those industries doing whatever. You're making whatever wage you're making for them. Part of the Green New Deal is a federal jobs guarantee that would transition you at the same rate, the same wages you're making into something like this. I remember when Ron and I were doing the Progressive Comedy Tour in Australia, we were in Perth. Now Perth is a big, Western Australia has a lot of mines, there's banking and all this stuff. And a guy said, look, I'm a geologist from one of the mining companies, you know, I'm, and he was like, apologize. I said, don't apologize, you need a job. Okay, let's say we take a guy like that, right? Now I know that's Australia, but Australia could do the same thing. Whatever that guy, that's a fan of this show, as a geologist, we give him the same amount of money he's making for the mining company. We transition him to do what he's good at with the soil. I don't know, I'm not a geologist, but what, what could he would take that, per, that just, it's just one example. He's making the same money so he doesn't lose his job. He's not out on the streets. The Green New Deal, oh, it's going to make everybody have to kill cows or whatever Sean Hannity's crazy thing is. Oh, AOC wants to outlaw planes and babies or whatever his wingnut thing is. But you see how that would work? So now a geologist is working to find more of these soil cultures or whatever, whatever geologists do to help save the planet. Do you see how this works? You're driving a truck for the oil companies? Well, maybe you start dry, dry, driving a truck that runs on biodiesel now that's delivering algae in these soil cultures all over the country. Do you see how this, do you see how we can just change this like literally overnight? So all of a sudden we're pulling CO2. Is this, this algae pulls CO2 out of it at 400 times the rate of trees. Now we've got that, this algae mass produced, we've got this methane soil thing mass produced. All of a sudden now we're pulling, we're doing several things. In addition to putting less um, pollutants in the air, we're pulling the bad ones out. Oh wow, maybe the temperatures would, would come down. You see how that could start to work? And the minute we start, there's, there's research and technology out there that can fix all of this. That's why Bernie's Green New Deal is the one. I'm telling you. And without it, without a real Green New Deal, you go with a Biden or a Buddha judge or a Liz Warren, oh man, we're done. It'll be centrist bullshit. It'll be drips and drabs. It'll be a little Band-Aid on a shotgun wound. And they'll go, we defeated Trump. And meanwhile, we'll all still be dead by 2040. Miami will be underwater. And for those of you who don't think climate change is real, know this, follow the money. That's what I say on this show. Follow the money. The fossil fuel, the whole global economy for the last 70 years has been predicated on cheap oil. Transportation, products, all of it, right? So the fossil fuel industry stands to lose trillions of dollars if the whole world transitions away from it. They see the writing on the wall. They did their own internal studies in the 70s saying fossil fuel, burning of fossil fuels is harming the environment. They buried those studies. That shit, that'll tell you all you need to know that there's no, that climate change denial is bullshit because then they funded climate change denial because they have a financial interest. It's a dumb one. They're dumb and short-sighted. 
they think they're going they're murdering their own grandchildren by doing this but they're like if the whole world pivots away from fossil fuel, then we lose trillions of dollars. So they have spent billions of dollars on misinformation campaigns. Know that. Anyone saying, oh, climate change isn't real, they're either working for the fossil fuel company or they are repeating fossil fuel company lies and talking points. They have a highly funded, highly sophisticated infrastructure of misinformation and propaganda. So if you don't believe in climate change, don't feel bad You've just been lied to by a bunch of billionaires that don't want to lose their private jets. Climate change is real. It's happening. These are solutions. That's why Bernie Sanders' Green New Deal will put all Americans back to work and it'll save the planet. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood, rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. Great ways to support the show. Like, share, and subscribe. YouTube keeps throttling my numbers. I've been stuck at 58,000. We should be over 100,000 subscribers by now, but that's my goal for 2020 is get 100,000 subscribers. So make sure you're subscribed. Even if you've done it numerous times, they're unsubscribing people. Watch the ads all the way through. When you click skip ad, I don't get paid. Share these videos out. Those are great free ways to support the show and then join us on the road. Ron Placona and I got tour dates starting January 25th. We're doing uh, Southern California, we're going to Arizona, we're going to Florida, we're going to the Pacific Northwest, we're going to uh, Cleveland and Indianapolis and Detroit in May. We got tour dates going all the way into the summer. Go to GrahamElwood.com for all the tour dates and boom, shave your knuckles for justice.